Welcome to Survivor All In, a theme park featuring all the best aspects of the groundbreaking TV show, modified to your comfort level. Compete in physical, mental, and endurance challenges to earn points and advantages in the game. Participate in votes and use your team efforts to advance further. Learn to be a survivor by building a shelter and scavenging the park for resources and hidden immunity idols. The top performers are featured on official park footage and can win big. Do you have what it takes to be a survivor? So this is based on the you know reality TV show Survivor, which I'm super, super into because it's on Amazon Prime and we're just chugging through them right now. Are you familiar with Survivor? Well, only in the pop culture sense. Like I know of it and I know like the basic tenets of it and mm-hmm. I've seen commercials. Pardon me while I uh, flatter you a little bit. Ooh. What I what I find so fascinating about this show is that you need a certain level of passion about what you're talking about to create a theme park of it, right? Like you have sure. to have investment in it. Mm-hmm. And what I find so fascinating is that like I I didn't <laughs> – don't come at me on Twitter. I apologize. I didn't care about Yu-Gi-Oh. <gasps> I don't care about Survivor. <gasps> but Or I didn't. Mm -hmm. Until I heard that. And once I heard somebody put passion into it and talk about the elements that they loved of these uh, of these properties and why and how they were going to make a park out of it. I was like, oh, my God, I'm in like I'm in one hundred and ten percent like I never cared about Survivor. I thought it was dumb, to be honest. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you don't have to like everything, but then I think you're right. Once once you make a theme park of it, it's like much more interesting. Well, and once I hear somebody who's passionate about it mm-hmm. talk about why they're passionate about it, I'm like, I get it. Yeah. Like, I get – like, you guys were talking about, like, the politics of it and, like, how, how you know, you strategize and, like, oh, throw this person out. Ooh, but keep this person in. And, like, oh, we have to – this person has that skill set. Oh, I got to make sure that I'm friends with him. He's got an immunity idol. Look, I'm going to make it longer. I need this person to be there later in the tournament because he can't beat me. So I'm going to give him my immunity idol. I was like, dude, what? How did I not watch that show? <laughs> right. It's it's really great. And I think that that's the the key is getting a, a guest on this podcast who is really into the topic. And that's why I have the guest pick the topic, because if I assign it, I don't know if that magic is going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. But then again, in that context, if I'm assigning it, it's probably something that I'm into. So that same magic might still happen. So I don't know. That's that's an interesting point. But I'm I'm glad that that has worked. I always feel like that going into a podcast. I'm like, this topic is like, meh. And then when we're done, I'm like, yes, I want to watch more gummy bears. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to go listen to the Green Hill Manor album again. Yeah, I'm, I'm always like that coming off of it. Like, I like this going in, but now I really love it and really value it after having that, that you know, kind of like impassioned conversation with someone about it. It's great. And, and that's something I love for, about podcasts is just hearing people talk about something makes you not only understand more about it, but feel more interested in it just because they're interested in it and they seem like a cool person or you know they seem to have brought out some interesting points about that specific topic well if you're willing to like empathize you can like jump in someone's head for like a couple minutes and just be like oh i get how that could work it's appreciation it's understanding how to appreciate it this was a really fun episode to do i think we kind of broke the mold of doing them based on just cartoons and video games and got it to be based on a reality series with real people and sure it maybe it parts of it are, are played up in the editing of the show but it's there's something authentic to like every moment of the show whether it's the challenges where people are like being totally new athletes trying a totally new challenge or the social elements of it or even the political uh you know we have to go to tribal tonight kind of elements so there's a lot of reality in this reality show and i think that made a really fun park because Uh, guess what? All of the guests are real. They're existing in their own reality. And I think it segues really smoothly. Whereas if you see Blue Eyes White Dragon, that might not make you feel like, oh yeah, this is something that I'm supposed to interact with. It takes you out of it a little. It does, absolutely. Um, But Survivor, you know, you see a big uh, net you have to climb up. You're like, oh, uh, crap, I have to do this. Like, totally immersive. The physical activity of it is, you know, that's going to leave you with a lot of memories. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I want to have more of like the the rivalry and the sort of um, you know story arcs of people plotting against each other. I like the idea of like in between any given challenge, mm-hmm. have people like say like into a camera like I you know I think I'm gonna have to work with this person or get rid of them or I'm on top, and like have a professional like 
edit that like your day trip like <laughs> oh you thought you were on top right before you lost yeah <laughs> like that's those, gonna make some good copy those are always really great uh clips of the show when it's like someone bragging about something and then immediately it cuts to them like failing horribly at it you um, have to keep this totally secret absolutely <laughs> i swear did you hear <laughs> <laughs> those are always the moments that make me just laugh out loud i think it'd be kind of fun for this part to make like to play up the kind of rivalry parts because when we recorded the episode, we talked a lot about having like an ongoing contest for people who are kind of in the middle of the island, the really intense, uh, more authentic experience. And then basically people on the outer ring are just kind of there for fun. It's more just like a carnival sort of thing, but that's all survivor based. But I thought it'd be kind of interesting to kind of try to build the tribe versus tribe mentality if you could sign up for that, you know, so we've got a group of four, we need another group of four to play against. And then someone could kind of, uh, plan that out you know if, okay so there's eight of you total you'll do a series of you know six challenges and then at between each one you'll have to vote somebody out so something that's maybe more authentic to the series um but still something you can just kind of pick up and get into like a pickup game of basketball instead of like a real nba tournament it's just like and it's it's so easy to establish that tribalism like <laughs> humans are this is what we do absolutely there's a great comic online where like a guy just finds a little stick on the ground and it just says like A or like team A or something. And then he sees another guy with a stick that says team B. And he's like, wow, I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> it is so true. It's so easy for us to connect with people who we have like physical evidence. Okay. This person's like me or you have evidence they're different than you. It's like, Oh man, <laughs> that person's different. And, yeah. Andrew, are you on red team or blue team? Uh, wow. Just in general. Yeah. I'm going to say blue team. We're going to have a problem. Oh, crap. <laughs> you and I are going to fight now. <laughs> Drat. That's how easy it is. You know, I don't know if I want to work with someone who's on Red Team anyway. The thing that I like about it is, you know, being forced to do this physical stuff, but you still have to make that commitment to go to wherever this amusement park is. Mm -hmm. I almost like the idea of just putting a few of the best challenges on, like, like on a tractor trailer and driving around and setting it oh, up like a, like, a top, like a county fair kind of thing. Yeah, like that's a great bring idea. Bring it to me. Like bring <laughs> me the best ones and let me, you know, I can, I can have family politics at home. Give me, <laughs> give me the give challenges. Me the challenges. I think that's a good idea to add that into a carnival because um, I'm sure you could build them that are kind of collapsible because if you think about like the physical materials they need for each challenge, there's always like a, an overhead shot of like this is what the whole course looks like before they explain the rules there's rarely that much material though you know towards the end sure there's like this huge like pyramid they have to get on top of generally speaking there's not a ton that goes into it so you could do them uh for not too much money without too much weight and and travel around with them as a part of your your carnival or whatever you could make it out of cardboard i don't care like, <laughs> i just want to climb on things you could honestly set up survivor style challenges on every playground you know what I mean? Yes. They're already there. They've already got the monkey bars. Just uh, add some, some flavor to it. Make it a Our, team challenge. The kids these days are weak. We need to train them age mm -hmm. five and up. We need to start that tribe mentality early so they can <laughs> use that as a motivator and uh, destroy the competition. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Perfect.